Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to be doing a hobby progress video over some experimentation I've been doing with swamp bases for my Nurgle army. It's a little bit different than the content that I usually put out there, but my third kid just arrived the other week. I don't have a ton of time to devote towards hobby right now, so I thought I'd just uh, take some video of some stuff that I was doing at my bench. And so hopefully you'll pick up a technique or two as I fumble through these test bases, and I do think it's a good idea whenever you're starting an army to do test out some different kinds of basing, see what will fit best with your army. I think basing is often an overlooked part of the hobby. People spend hours and hours on a model, then they just slap down some sand and some flock and call it a day. And while that's fine, if you want to really go the extra mile, if you want to get a really unique army, if you spend a little bit more time on your basing, you can get pretty outstanding results. So starting off, I have some 32 millimeter MDF bases. I chose these over the standard GW bases because as you can see, they have a smooth side, which will make it easier for damming them up because I plan on pouring resin on these bad boys. That's going to be kind of the secret uh, recipe in this base. I want it to look like my plague marines are wading through a swamp. So I'm just taking these bases, put a little bit of air dry clay on there, kind of making sure they have a flat edge again to help to dam up the resin when I pour it. I don't want uh, there to be anything hanging over the edges that causes the, there to be any room for the resin to leak through. And then after I kind of have it nice and flush against the edge, I just take some tools, make little divots just so that it looks like there's a little bit of undulation in the ground, make it look a little bit more realistic. And uh, then I'll go and even put some rocks on there, a few resin skulls, just in case you look through the resin, you might be able to spot them, but as we'll see, you won't really be able to see them. Last thing too, I just go ahead and I take some sand and I sprinkle it up on top of the clay, and when it dries, it'll give it a little bit more texture. And then I'm going and I'm spraying them a dark burnt umber color with my airbrush. That'll be the dark tone for these. And then as you'll see, and then after the burnt umber is dried, I'm going around the edges of the base with a green brown color so that it looks like when you're looking at it that the middle of the base is deep, deep swamp and it's getting shallower as you go out. I think it gives a nice effect when you have the model standing on top of it. It also kind of looks like a shadow being cast by the model as it's standing in the middle. Anyways, it just gives a subtle variation in color to the base. And then once the base is dried, I'm going to go ahead and dry brush it with a tan yellow just to pull the two different colors together. And then I'm going to start gluing my miniatures onto the base instead of pinning it like I usually would since I'm going to be pouring resin in there which will hold him down pretty well. I'm just gluing him to the base here with some super glue. And then we're going to move on to painting some of the plastic some plastic foliage I got from a hobby store. I didn't really like the color of it. It was kind of too hunter green. And so I took some uh, dark green and sprayed over over the plastic and then went back over it with here a tan yellow color, uh, highlighting the edges just to give some variation in color. And even though I will not really like my fern base that I make with these, I think I'll use this on other terrain. I think they turned out well. And now we're going to move to another piece of plastic, uh, plastic foliage I got. We got these little weird looking plants with some leaves and some of these weird buds. I thought it looked pretty Nurgle. So I'm taking it, but the color is, you know, too light. It doesn't look disgusting enough. So I'm just going and I'm hitting it with some brown and green washes all over the leaves and around the stems, just hitting it, making it look as disgusting as possible, going over with a bunch of greens and browns and things like that, trying to get a really displeasing look to it. And then, because I think it looks weird when you have uh, flesh colors on plants, I, for some reason that just kind of grosses me out, I decided I'll go ahead and do that on this. So I go ahead and first base the, uh, the bulb ends with some pink, and then I'll go and get a light skin tone, like a fair skin tone, and hit the tops. And I think the contrast between the pink and the skin with the brown and the green kind of uh, snot color of the leaves uh, looks nice and nurgly. And I'll go ahead and just stick that to my base. And there you go. I think it fits in pretty well with this guy. And so then I'm going to go and I'm going to add those, uh, those pieces of fern that I had 
airbrushed just recently and I'm gonna add it to the base just gonna kind of uh, use my hand and and stick it down there with some super glue hold it in place for a second then put the another frond right next to it and go around and it looks really good I really liked how these ferns turned out after I put them down they'll look not so good once the resin is poured I was not pleased with how it turned out it just didn't look right so uh, I'll be I'll be using these um, for sure when I'm making other kinds of swamp terrain but I'm not gonna pour resin over it. it just didn't have the look I was going for but there you go see looks pretty realistic as a fern so you know that was nice learned how to make ferns and then next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a swamp tuft all right I love making my own tufts of grass instead of spending you know five bucks for a sheet of uh, static grass from you know army painter you can make your own so here I just take a big piece of uh, PVA glue I'm gonna add a, a few chunks of some coarse turf on there just to give a little bit of uh, I don't know just give a little different silhouette to my tuft here and then I'm gonna go over it with six millimeter static grass it's kind of a mix of a fall and a spring blend looks it's green with a little bit of a uh, dead white grass in there which I not like then I'm gonna take this old brush I'm gonna cut off the top and I'm gonna use these to simulate like reeds that you'd find in a, in a swamp or a wetland just put it on there and boom there you go you got yourself a nice little uh, swamp tuft with some reeds sticking out of it you know I, I'm gonna experiment in the future with making like cattails on the ends of the reeds uh, I didn't do that here I just didn't have the time but there you go and uh, you let it let it dry for a few hours and then you can just pick it off like a regular tuft and stick it on the base and then for my fourth base here I'm going to be uh, experimenting with using faux fur to simulate reeds or swamp grass and putting it on the base never done this before and like the uh, the fern it's not going to turn out as well as I'd hope the resin's going to do some weird stuff when it hits the faux fur I'm thinking maybe if I if I use a little less resin it would have turned out all right but I'm just using my typical typical strategy of starting with a dark green color kind of combing it into the fur and then going and adding increasing amounts of lighter colors I use some some tan yellow colors here I'm using kind of a bright lime green going over it with my skin tones as my final highlight using fair skin and also dark skin tone and then I'm just cutting it out after I get uh, some uh, realistic look that I like adding it to the base here and adding it to either side to kind of look like that this guy's just kind of like I don't know like uh, marching through a marsh pushing down grass as he's going through it and it I actually like how it looks like I think I might use this for non swamp terrain for just uh, regular miniatures grassland miniatures I think it looked pretty cool especially it kind of looks like prairie grass but it ain't gonna turn out so well once the resin's poured and for my last miniature, I thought, hey, I have some of these uh, mantic zombies. Wouldn't it be cool if I had like these zombies coming out of the swamp? And I'm at, I was actually really pleased with this. I think it looked really cool once I poured the resin. So I just took some super glue, painted them up with kind of a drowned uh, blue paint scheme for the zombie, and just added the top of them. Like again, he's coming out of the swamp. And then along with them, I'm just putting some different kinds of static grass here. There's like these little bulbous things that again were part of the plastic uh, foliage that I bought they look weird almost like eggs or something so I put that on the side and I took some coarse turf and just put it around my little zombie guy to kind of hide where his body is attached to it make it look like he's just coming out of this foliage and whatnot and I think it'll turn out pretty well and then I'm just going back and I'm going doing something that as you'll see was completely useless I will be going around and putting coarse turf some little tufts of static grass in there my hope was oh you'll be able to see this through the resin and it will look really cool it'll give a lot of dimension to it uh, but it won't because you won't be able to see it but oh well so now it's for the most stressful part we got to prepare for pouring the resin so here I to dam up the resin make sure it doesn't leak out I put some painters tape all around and as I was doing this I noticed that the I wasn't giving like a perfect circle it wasn't a a perfect bond around uh, around the miniature it was kind of irregularly shaped and I thought you know what that'll be fine that'll look kind of cool and natural having weird shapes to the resin in hindsight no it 
it didn't look all that great. So uh, I, I'm going to use like Plasticard or something else when I make the rest of my miniatures and make sure they have a nice uniform circular shape uh, to the resin once it dries. Um, but going back, I always use uh, hot glue as kind of a backup measure whenever I, I dam up um, anything for resin and so even with the plastic card that I'll be using to get a more regular shape to the resin I will you know use hot glue at the bottom just like I did here and now we're gonna mix the resin so you get some Envirotex light you get the hardener you get the resin you mix them together you stir it around a bunch all right this part uh, used to be really stress inducing for me because if you look at the instructions they have you know very specific time requirements but really, I, it, it takes a while for this to set. It's, it's not as stressful as it seems when you're reading the instructions and you have to dump it from cup to cup and change stirring sticks. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really not that bad. To make sure I'm a little more accurate with the resin, I scoop it up with a syringe and I'm pouring it into the base area, trying to avoid shooting it onto the miniature or in trying to avoid putting it directly on the pieces of foliage and stuff, just getting around it in the small spaces. And I think I put too much resin in. I want it to look deep. I think it was a little bit too deep. I will uh, be remedying that in the future. Now that the resin has dried, let's take off the tape and look at these guys. And so first I'll go through the ones I thought turned out pretty well. So I actually really liked how this guy turned out with that plastic piece of foliage that we painted. It looks nice, nergly, disgusting. The resin's in too deep. I, I think I like that one. And same with this guy with the reed sticking out of the resin. All the pieces that had the foliage sticking out quite a bit, I liked because unfortunately the resin wasn't as transparent as I'd like, so you didn't see all the foliage and all the little details I put on the base because I put too much ink in there. So next time I might use a little less ink, maybe even no ink, just paint the base a dark yellow and hopefully that's, that'll be enough to simulate the swamp. Then we look at this guy, and this guy was kind of a just a nightmare. So the resin clumped up, you have different thicknesses around the base, the fur absorbs some of the resin. It wasn't great. So I do not think that faux fur is a material to use with resin, at least not in this way. So that one was kind of a bust. He doesn't look terrible. I, I, I'll be able to salvage him, uh, but not my favorite. And then the other one that really didn't turn out all that well was this guy, the fern guy. Uh, the ferns looked good by themselves. You pour the resin there and it just kind of looked weird. The resin kind of bent up the fronds into an unnatural position. Uh, you can't see them all that well. You can't really tell what they are unless you really examine it closely. Just wasn't the greatest. You know, I really like the ferns how they look. So I'll be using that on different terrain, but I will not be doing the resin with them. Um, so that one was also kind of a bust. This is probably my favorite. I really like this guy with the zombie coming out of the swamp. Uh, you can't really see the foliage that's around him because, again, the rest is too dark. But uh, I think I'll be doing this for a lot of my Plague Marines, have these zombies crawling around him, and uh, maybe have some more of the kind of reed-type uh, foliage coming out around him. I think that would look really cool. Anyways, I really liked this model. So, in the end... I know I probably sound hard on myself, but I'm the person that believes that you learn the best through failure, which is why I make these test models. And so I learned a ton from this process. Like, I learned, like, I'll probably be mixing the zombie, uh, the zombie kind of bases. I'll mix that with maybe some of the different plastic plants and put a few of those swamp tufts that I created that kind of look like reeds. I thought all those looked pretty good, so I think I can have a pretty cool looking army. I know that I will be using Plasticard to uh, dam up my resin so I get a nice, uh, almost perfect circle, not this irregular shaped resin. And I also learned that I'll probably, you know, uh, need to be using either a clear resin if I want my foliage to show through or use something really bright. Like you can kind of see like those little white egg pieces of plastic foliage I have at the bottom, which you can see down there. Anyways, I hope you picked something up from this. Uh, I hope you learned as much as I did. I, th I have a good idea now going forward what I want to do with my army and what how I want to base them, which was the whole point. If you enjoyed this, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you all soon with a new video. Take care.